You know, if you had told me like two years ago when I decided to donate to Spider-Man Lois' Indiegogo campaign that when the film finally released, it would go on to be mocked and reviled across the internet and quote tweets of its premiere would be filled with pictures of men in Casper cosplay, I honestly would not have been surprised. Fandom is awful. But if you had told me that this response was because a director and star of the film had been exposed for their pretty gross use of the N-word, among other slurs, I... Still would not have been surprised. There's a shocking amount of people who are into and work on superhero media, despite being pretty morally bankrupt, which honestly is just confusing, but I also would not have donated. And that's what I want to talk about today, because I feel in all the discourse about what will most likely go down as the most infamous fan film ever made, so much focus has been centered on the director's past repugnant bigoted behavior that we have yet to properly address the glaring issue that so many of the people who not only funded this project, including myself, but those who actively worked on it, actors, the assistant director, the VFX team, costume designers, editors, would not have done so if they had known everything we know now from the start. Making Lotus a project that was effectively built off of ill-gotten gains, something that is made far more egregious when you consider one of the main draws of this movie was its production, not just in terms of its perceived high quality, but its ethicality. Ethicality. Is that a word? Who cares? You know what I mean. Before I continue though, let me just preface that I am not here to discuss in any way whether or not Gavin should be forgiven for his past racist remarks. That's already been talked about to death and ultimately, the movie still released, still had a premiere in a huge theater to a massive audience turnout with a red carpet and everything, regardless of the controversy. So what would even be the point? No, instead I want to focus on how incredibly unethical it was for him to allow anyone to contribute to his project without being completely transparent with them beforehand about how all their hard work could be compromised if an aspect of his personal history were to become public. How not doing so speaks to a certain degree of self-centeredness and entitlement on his behalf and is far more telling of the kind of guy Gavin is than his leaked DMs. Because filmmaking, you see, especially indie filmmaking, is a process primarily built on trust. The phrase, it's a miracle that any movies get made, let alone any of them are good, is something nearly all aspiring filmmakers have heard, and it's because it's 100% true. So much has to go right for this thing just to make it across the finish line, and even if it does, there's no guarantee it won't be a big old hot pile of garbage, or worse, mediocre as shit. Everybody involved knows this, and yet they will still pour enormous amounts of time, energy, passion, and more often than not money with the goal of bringing this thing to fruition. Why? Because they believe in the project, and more importantly, they believe in the person leading that project, and in this case, that was Gavin. All these young, hungry, hard-working, talented people believed in him, and he took advantage of that. Because the facts are that if you have any desire to work in the entertainment industry, and have been, like, watching it for the last five years, then it is clear that this stuff always comes to light. Maybe not now, maybe not 10 years from now, maybe not even until the person is no longer around to face any consequences for it, but it never stays hidden. And when that dirty laundry eventually does get aired out, it always ends up harming innocent parties, sometimes causing irreparable damage with long-lasting consequences for them, more so if they're new and unestablished talent. So hiding it to me comes off as you caring more about what X opportunity could do for your career and your future than the feelings and reputations of any of the people you worked with such accepted money from. And I don't know, that's just kind of scummy to me. I mean, just look at the poor guys from Spidey Labs. They made what is arguably one of the best, not just Spider-Man, but live-action superhero suits, period. This thing is a masterpiece of costuming. It literally looks like it just leaped off the page of one of John Romita Sr.'s comic books, and yet will always be known as the racist Spider-Man suit. Their hard work has forever been tainted. Anytime I see this suit come up on socials, it's either people shitting on it because of its association to Gavin, or to people wanting to praise it but having to be like, asterisk, I don't condone white supremacy or some shit. Can you imagine working your ass off to create something that can genuinely be described as the best in its field, only to find out that the person you made it for is the reason you can never proudly speak of it? God, that has to suck. And look, I'm aware that there are those who worked on the film that since the fallout have now come to be on better terms with Gavin, like the actress who played Mary Jane attending the premiere and the actress who played Gwen Stacy being supportive of it on socials. But that doesn't change the fact that one, there are still people who worked on the film who are clearly not on good terms with the director and like, they matter too. And second, that he willfully put all these people's careers in jeopardy. Like, I sincerely hope the movie is good and will be able to shake off the stigma because having your first 
first major movie credit be what is widely known as a racist fan film is kind of a career killer, man. Now, despite what some of you may think based off of what I've said in the video so far, I am a big advocate in the power of forgiveness. Ultimately, I believe that people should be given the opportunity to learn and grow from their mistakes rather than be haunted by them for the rest of their lives and be denied a chance at a brighter future because of them. I also recognize that someone can be genuinely remorseful of their actions, but not have the strength of character to hold themselves accountable for it, especially if doing so comes at great personal cost. And I understand how hard it can be to confront the awful things you've done in the past or not want to because of how it'll change other people's perception of you. Honestly, I do. But if you're not going to own up to your past, if you're not going to be forthright with people about the things you've done that might make them not want to work with you or support you, then at the very least you should be doing your utmost to protect them from your mistakes. Now did Gavin J. Konob do that? Fuck no! We live in a culture where you can be the most likable, unproblematic, the absolute saint of a human being, and yet somebody, somewhere, will have such a hate boner for you that they'll turn causing your downfall into their hobby. You'd think someone with the kind of skeletons this guy has in his closet would then be, I don't know, very cautious about starting beef with anybody or giving anybody any reason to start digging through his dirty laundry. <laughs> nope, in fact, he was pretty notorious for being an inflammatory figure in the Spider-Man fan community. Now, I don't really feel right recounting the interactions of people I don't know to back this statement up, especially when there's really no way for me to verify them. So I'm just going to relay one of my own to make this point. Back in September of 2021, so actually before I donated to the Indiegogo campaign, this man personally slighted me and I still gave him money. Can you believe that? Anyway, one day I wake up and hop on Twitter like a good little addict. And the first thing I see is a thread from GJK Central, where he basically had cut up and re-uploaded almost in its entirety my buddy and at the time, new video examining the first 30 issues of Stanley and Steve Ditko's run on Spider-Man. Tearing apart for his audience and just shitting on the video as like not understanding Spider-Man whatsoever. And like me and Lowe had been working together on Close to Home for a while at this point, And thus I'd become privy to his process and how much work goes into it. You know, how he does weeks of reading and for research and taking notes. And so I was pretty fucking pissed to see his work be disrespected in this way. And like I'm aware that there's a big debate going on right now about what is and isn't okay in regards to reaction content but like I think collectively we can agree that what he did was shitty and that anybody would be well within their right to have a grievance with him afterwards especially since it was completely unprovoked the video wasn't about him or his project or had even been making the rounds or whatever it was just peacefully existing in its own little corner until he decided to drag it through the mud on his platform for no other reason than because he didn't agree with the take no smarter than most people who do YouTube for a living from the simple fact that he doesn't really use Twitter and like wasn't even aware this had happened until I reached out to him about it and thus was completely unbothered by it. But what if he had been? That's the point I'm trying to illustrate here. This man was actively doing provocative shit, making potential enemies that would want to bring him and everything his crew had been working on to ruin, knowing damn well that the ammunition to do so was out there. It's painfully ironic that this guy wanted to direct a movie about Spider-Man, considering how irresponsible he acted on socials while it was being made. How little he cared about or valued any of the hard work that was going into his movie, constantly putting it at risk just so he could stroke his ego. Then again, I guess no one should be surprised considering how unethically he acted to obtain that hard work in the first place. All of which pales in comparison to the current wave of allegations, which I'm not going to share here since I'm not sure if they're legit yet, but God, if they are, it just makes this whole situation that much more disheartening. Because for a lot of people like me, movies, TV, they're not just entertainment. They're an integral part of our lives. It's how we bond. It's how we cope. It's sometimes the only thing that gives us hope. I can't tell you how many times I've had my life change because I sat down and watched a movie. But in the last few years, it's become very clear how much of this thing that is so important to me and many others is made unethically. The current movement of strikes from SAG-AFTRA and now the VFX union that you're seeing across Hollywood are the byproduct of that. And if you have a conscience like mine, continuing to engage with that thing you love becomes incredibly difficult. So when this fan film popped up on the scene almost three years ago with a suit that looked on par with something that would come out of a major studio, many disillusioned film fans got excited and with every update that hype slowly started to build until slowly but surely Lotus had surpassed just being a 
really impressive looking fan film and in a way had become the face of a potential new wave of high-end independent cinema that was going to be free of all the creatively limiting and problematic elements plaguing the industry. The perfect example of this status in my opinion was the very first scandal that broke up around Lotus regarding the storyboard artist's team's lack of payment. Now ignoring the fact that it should have never happened to begin with since the first thing you should do after acquiring more funds on any project is compensating your volunteers, when all was said and done, Gavin did apologize, admitted to his wrongdoing, and proceeded to rectify it by paying those board artists, all while the film was still being made, preserving the integrity of the final product. Which is why I find tweets like this so damn frustrating, because I, and so many other people who chose to financially back this project, did so because despite being like a year older and no more experience in the talent behind the scenes, I could tell from the way they had been handling their production that these filmmakers truly cared about not just what they were making, but how they were making it. And I wanted to support that. I wanted this exciting experiment to succeed. But now, when I see footage of the premiere on Twitter, or, sorry, X, uh, <laughs> I, I don't feel proud. I don't feel happy that in small part due to my contribution, this incredibly ambitious project was able to beat the odds and actually exist, but is having the red carpet rolled out for it. Instead, I feel conned that I was bamboozled into giving money to some entitled, egotistical, probably still racist asshole so he could live out his personal fantasy. And that fucking sucks. And it sucks so much more because I really could have used this movie right now. My best friend, one of the most important people in my life, is no longer in it. And I've been dealing with a lot of grief because of that. To have a story where the hero I've looked up to since I was a kid deal with that same loss, that same grief, watching him not fall into the despair, the hurt, just the pain of everything, not be consumed by the guilt that what happened is partially their fault, maybe all their fault. To pick himself back up the way I'm trying to right now, it could not have come at a better time, you know? But there's just no ignoring how this movie was made and by who. So as much as I may want to emotionally give myself into it, to feel some catharsis about everything I'm personally experiencing right now, it's just not something that can be done. And that's just such a tragic fate for this whole thing, isn't it? Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching that video. Sorry that I've been gone for so long. I, I've been meaning to and wanting to, you know, come back and make videos, but it's just been really hard to like get in the closet and start joking and laughing and doing all that stuff. <sighs> when I've been crying so much. <laughs> um, but... On the real, I, I, there's a lot of projects I'd like to start work on that I'm very excited for, and I think you guys might be excited for too, especially if you're a Spider-Man fan, which I assume you might be if you're watching this, because I've decided to restart all production on Close to Home. Not because of the Lotus situation, but more just because, I don't know, I think it'd be healthy for me with everything going on to start working on that again. Um, amongst other things, many other things that I'm excited for, and hopefully I will be able to do, which is why I've also decided to open up a Patreon. Now, this is something I've been wanting to do for a while now. Um, the primary reason I'm doing this now, of course, is because, well, with everything I've been dealing with for like the last year, on top of the most recent events, um... My mental is just not in a great place. And normally I would just kind of suppress and just work through it like I always have. But I just can't do that anymore. Uh, I, I'm in a place where I actually need to sit down and work through this properly. Um, so this is safe to say I can't hold a regular 9 to 5 job at like a retail store or whatever. So right now the only way I'm making money is through this. Um, and you know also like in a way it'll kind of incentivize me to not accidentally just fall into a depression and just completely waste away or whatever because owing you guys a video at the end of the month or something or other it is still a motivation I may mean, not the healthiest motivation but it's a motivation and I think like like I don't know how to say this but I think it'll be good for me so if you want to support what I do here I don't know. I <laughs> go go check it out. I don't know, right? 
Um, I, I I don't want to freak you guys out. I know there. It's weird because I don't expect like I don't expect the audience to care about me because it's like we don't really know each other. But I know some of you guys do, and I really appreciate that. I'll, I'll be okay. I have to be okay. You know, that's just it's life, man. I don't know. I'm. Is this getting too real? I I don't know. This might be getting too real. This is just this is where I'm at right now, guys. Okay. Um, I, but I will be seeing you guys soon with something less heavy, less personal, or not less personal because I, I putting myself into these things is important to me. I think that's that's you know that's part of what makes it all worth the while that connection. But maybe not this disclosed. But I, I need you to understand where I'm at right now for the time being. And everything I'm working on at the moment. Because disclosing all this stuff is important. It's part of the ethics. That's what the whole video was about. <laughs> Were you not paying attention? <laughs>